Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. It is October 24th. We're one week away from Halloween. Ooh, I love Halloween. Um, how is everybody? Excellent, that's really good to hear. Um, we've got not a whole lot of Q&A this week. Um, But we've got a little Q&A, we've got a tiny scotch of haul, um, we've got a finish, we've got whip updates. Um, yeah, so let's dive right on in. So the first question comes from Rose Holman, and it's a series of questions. She says that back stitching and long stitches are a thorn in my side. How do you secure your floss at the beginning and end stitches? With long stitches, how do you keep them tight? How do you attach the floss to backstitch when there are no stitches nearby? Um, all very good questions. The... To start with, most of the time with backstitching, um, and we'll use um, backstitching or long stitching, most of the time, and this is actually a really good example because it's got several of these in it, so, okay, well, here's, here you're going to see the finish. I'll come back to it in a second. There's Little Women. Okay. So, in Little Women, the windows were long stitches. Now, you could do them individually. I did that and decided that that was more trouble than I wanted to deal with. So, for the most part, though, I will just secure, here's my back. I will just secure it under stitches near it. Um, for the most part, if you just run it over like you would normal stitches, if you're not doing a loop start, you're going to be fairly okay. If you're a little worried or if it's something that's extra slippery, sometimes what I will do is I'll go under, come back up, and then go under again. So it sort of makes a, a loop before I start going, and that just sort of gives it a little extra friction to sort of keep it held. For a long stitch like this, like the the needle and thread here, sorry, that's very bright. What I actually do, so like that there, is I take my strands that are supposed to form the stitch, I'll secure them and bring them up to the front and leave it, take it off the needle. Then I'll get a single strand of the same color, secure it on the back, and then every point where it intersects on the grid. So, um, for instance, on Little Women. And forgive me, Kristen, for showing part of the pattern. But if anyone's able to do much off of it from there. So everywhere that it actually hits a point on the grid before its next curve, that's where I come up at. So, for instance, I came up here with the main stitch. And then because it was... So I came up from there, I did a single stitch there, I did a single stitch there, and there, and I sort of weave it around, couching it as I go. Um, and that tacks it down into place and follows the, follows the curve, as it were. So doing that is how I handle long stitches. Now, if we're talking about an area that's specifically backstitched and there's no stitches nearby, I'm not one of those people that's super picky about carrying thread. If I'm going to use two stands, then I'll just do a loop start. Call it a day because it's going to secure itself there, and then I'll sort of weave around under to secure it. Um, otherwise, I tend to be one that I will carry backstitches um, because it doesn't bother me. Um, because by and large, I've never had a piece where it's shown on the back, the front side after it's been finished. 
By the same token, I also don't really work with super light colored fabrics terribly often. So that's probably part of it. All right. Um, Deborah Dixon asks, if I haven't covered it already, do I use a pin stitch? If so, could you talk about how you like it and how it looks? Um, I will use a pin stitch on occasion. Usually it's because where I'm starting, there's not, it's a little too far to carry and I'm being a floss saver. Um, I know I just got through saying I don't mind carrying, but there are times where, yeah, I won't carry. Now, if it's just one single stitch, yes, I'm going to carry it. But, um, I do use a pen stitch, um, which is where, and it only really works on your even weaves or your linens. Um, and I know I have used it somewhere in here. Generally, it's very hard to tell that you've used one if you do it right. But what you basically do is you come up, you make half a leg and go down through the center hole. You go back, you finish the leg coming up to the bottom corner, going back through the center hole. And then you do your top stitch to cover it. And what that does is it creates, it, it sort of tacks it into place. Um, usually I'll still try and catch the thread under. Um, that doesn't always work. So we can see, is there anything that's like this one here in Alice? That was a pin stitch. Um, because I didn't have a good way to anchor it before. So I do use it. I It's not something I do super often. Like it's not a go-to stitch for me. But I have been known to use it, particularly when I can't use a loop start. Um, or what I'll also sometimes do is if I'm having trouble getting it to stay under where I'm wanting to start the stitch, um, after about the third or fourth attempt where it just pulls straight through on me, I'll pin stitch because ain't nobody got time for that. Jean Maxwell asks, what do you do with all your finished works? The ones that have not been FFO'd have gone into bags. Um, the ones that have been FFO'd, some of them I've got hanging up. Some of the seasonal ones, they come out seasonally, but then they go away. Uh, others are hung randomly throughout the house or displayed throughout the house. I have a couple that are out most of the year, but at Halloween and Christmas go away because where they are gets decorated with Halloween and Christmas. So it just sort of depends. Um, some of it does get given away. Some of it goes to my mother. Um, she claims some of them, not all of them, but some of them. Um, it just sort of depends. All right. Okay, so my one little bit of haul this week. Um, I needed another skein of the metallic blue that I'm using in cryptids. Um, Fire poppies didn't have it, so I had to order it from one to three stitch, and I don't like just ordering one skein of thread. Uh, so, of course, that meant a pattern had to go with it. And Zav Stitches started this, and I thought it was super cute. It's three gables from the Craig collection. So... I don't know when I'll start it, but I, I ordered it because I, I needed it. It was a sneed. Okay. So, moving right along. Um, what did I work on? Well, um, I've put in, put in a little work on Alice. Um, I've got 18 hours left of the marathon. This is on Charming Autumn from X Jude using primarily Aurifil, but a couple of hand dyed flosses for the border pieces. So I did finish up part six, right? Because that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm down here on part seven. 
Um, I am going to work on it today, but I think I'm actually going to come over and finish out part two um, so that they're done cause, and go from there because I, I would like to finish part two. Um, I have accepted that I will not be caught up on this by the time it finishes. That's just not going to happen. So I think what I'm going to do is after the marathon is over, um, it's just going to be when it comes up on the wheel, I will work a part of the sal and put it away until the next time it comes up on the wheel. So there we go. Okay, of course, I've been keeping up with Cryptids by the Witchy Stitcher. Um, this is all in Aurifil with some Krynik and Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. So here's where I'm at on it. So since we last met, the Hopkins Goblin was added and the Frogman was added. So we're almost halfway done. Um, kind of where my needle minder is, is where the next part will go. So I will be at, and we have this week off. We get, it's like four weeks on, one week off, basically. So, um, I'll be working on the corner and hopefully I will be caught up over here by the time this one comes out. And then the next time you see me, we'll have a half finish cryptid cell. I really, really enjoy this one. It's a lot of fun. I think they're super cute. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this one. Um, and it's been a lot of fun to see some of the different, like I've knew, I knew Mothman. I knew the Jersey devil. Obviously I knew the Chupacabra cause I grew up in Texas. I'd heard of the Hopkins goblin. But the Enfield Horror, the Fresno Nightcrawlers, the Frogmen, those were all new to me. And I kind of think the Frogmen reminds me, um, I feel like probably Chris Cross Stitcher will get this. I don't know who else will get this. But does anyone remember the episode of Scooby-Doo where, <laughs> Scooby-Doo, Golden Girls, um, where Davy Jones guest starred in the castle and the moat monster was, the, that's what this makes me think of, is the moat monster. So it brought back happy memories of, of Davy Jones. I also gave him, it's a little hard to tell, but I gave him a belly button because I thought he needed one because the, the Hopkins goblins got nipples. So I thought he needed, I thought he needed a belly button. That's right, folks. Come for the cross stitching. Stay for the discussion of nipples on monsters. Ah, what is my life? Um, and this one's being stitched on uh, Victoria by Deerfoot Fibers. Okay, so the finish, which I guess I probably should have started with, was Little Women um, by Stitching Book Club. This was on, um, I don't know what was it called? It's a, it's a Fortnite. It is a Fortnite fabric. Let me look this up real quick. I want to say Whimsical Winter, but that doesn't sound right. Eccentric Sky. So this is Eccentric Sky from Fortnite Fabrics. Um, I did not do the outer border because I have a very, very specific frame in mind, or like frame shape. And right now this is an 8x10. So it would fit perfectly if I can find the shape that I want. So but I have a very specific idea for it. Um, I will assume we're going to get Great Gatsby soon, but I know with her health, things are a little behind, so I don't know if she's going to skip Gatsby and go straight to Wardrobe, or I don't, I don't know what her plan is, um, but I know she's been ill, I know she's moving, so of course my thoughts and best wishes go with her. I will follow her probably wherever she goes. And use this downtime in between to maybe finish up Pride and Prejudice or Frankenstein, since those are both not finished yet. All right, what else did I work on? Well, there was a new start, which is not in this bag. There's a new start that's coming up to show you all. So I did work on Shining Star. This was my late week at work, um, so I did not get a whole lot accomplished. Um, 
Wednesday, I was so exhausted. I think I did like 15 stitches and that was it. Um, so this is Shining Star from Sam Sarah. Um, I've converted it all to Gentle Arts wool um, and one DMC wool, which they no longer make, but my LNS had when I was needing something one time. This is on Dryad's Saddle from Fortnite Fabrics. And there we go. So we've got a mug of hot cocoa, a Christmas ball, and a snowflake. That's as far as I got. So next time it comes up, I'm hoping to get some of the words done and we'll get a little more progress, I think. I really like this pattern. I've liked it for a long time. Um, so I'm excited that I'm actually getting to work on it. Okay. I marked off another whip go goal with um, South Seas Mermaid. I had 300 on a Mirabilla. And I did it basically all in Krynik. So this is on Moana from uh, Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, so all that dark metallic green on this side, basically from like here up was 300 stitches. So I'm almost to the top of her body though. So that's nice. So next time I'm hoping, uh, next time I have this one out, here's the, and I'm actually doing all the called for colors in this thing. Strange, I know, um, at least for her body. So, um, I'm hoping next time I'll be up to, I'll finish up the top part there. Um, and then I can start working my way back around. Um, there's a lot of beads in her. A lot of beads. But that's okay, because she's going to be pretty. So, um, so yeah, so that's on Moana from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. I had to go digging. <laughs> digging through, um, through, uh, first my Etsy, or through my Instagram, and then I had to go digging through a conversation, and I finally found where I had written, where I commented, oh, this is the fabric I'm using. Oh, the days when I didn't keep good notes. Oh, hey, what's in this bag? This bag has, oh, this is a new start. This one did have chickens in it, but I moved chickens to a different bag. Um, so this is um, by Bent Creek. It's one of their snappers, and it's called The Haunted House. So I'm working on, it's a three-parter. I'm working on the first part, which is the frame of the house. Um, and it's called uh, The Petrified Party. And then part two is Got Newt, and it's a little witch with a cauldron and a black cat. And then the top floor is called Creak and Squeak, and it's two ghosts dressing up in old clothes. And I love this one. It's got the feather boa and the cute hat. Like, that That ghost is my ghost. I love that ghost. Um, so I'm doing this on a one-off from Under the Sea Fabrics. And here it is. I got the roof done. Um... Really, really loving it. So, um, unfortunately, I have lost both the buttons and the snapper, or the snaps, for part one. So, huh, no clue where they are. Absolutely none. Hopefully it'll turn up. I did email Bent Creek to ask if they could tell me what the buttons were, because the black snaps, I can just get black snaps very easily. And I have not heard back from them. So... Absolutely zero clue what, what they were. So I may just have to find some random star buttons. All right. Yeah, the things that I've worked on. That one still hasn't been touched. Okay. Um, chickens got worked on. So, 
I got this side border done. So there we go. Um, next time I work on it, I have no clue what part I will go to. We'll see. Probably the other side border would make the most sense, but uh, that implies that I do things in a logical fashion, and I don't always. Because where's the fun in that? Okay. Let's see. And I worked on Wicked Siblings. This is from uh, Mama Witch Cross Stitch. So I should have, I did one eye and I really should have waited, but that's okay. So this is on another one-off from Fortnite Fabrics. That's where I'm at on her. But the skirt is officially done. So yay for that, because that skirt was no joke. Um, so I'm hoping she'll start really coming together a little bit quicker now that I've done the bulk of her, because I'm really ready to get onto the rest of the pattern. And then finally, we've got Witchy Dreams by Barbara Anna. This one's on another Fortnite fabric as well. This one is, um, Norkia Black Truffle. So parts one and two are done. Um, part three is out, and I've got to get going on that. Um, but I've got some color conversions planned. Um, and yeah, so I've got, I've got some color changes that need to happen. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. So that'll probably, I'm hopefully going to work on her this week. All right. That's everything. So um, I hope everyone had a great week um, or a great two weeks. I hope everyone has a fun and safe Halloween. Um, and I will see you all in November. Uh, we've got a couple of things. I know I've got some fun surprise finishes from Oliver. Um, I've got most of the stuff to finally finish out um, the secret garden. Um, I just got to basically do it. Um, so that's exciting. So anyhow, I hope everyone has a great couple of weeks. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.